What if I tell you that the simplest plants to ever exist on our planet are among the first ones to colonize our lands? You heard me. Meet the bryophytes, a group of small, seedless, non-vascular plants that have been around for over 400 million years. In this video, we're going to talk about their structure, reproduction styles and how they silently benefit our environments on a daily basis. Despite their small size and simple structure, bryophytes are incredibly diverse and you can find them in all kinds of places. But they thrive especially in moist, damp and shady habitats like marshes and tropical rainforests. That's because these primitive plants won't be able to reproduce sexually without the presence of water in their habitats. We'll talk more about this in just a few minutes. Bryophytes have been divided into three main groups. Mosses, liverworts, and hornworts. And all of them lack differentiated bodies, meaning they do not have roots, stems, or leaves like the higher plants. Most species, however, have root-like, stem-like, or leaf-like structures. But they're nothing like the true roots, stems, or, or leaves that we see in the higher plants. You see, the true leaves, stems and roots, they have specialized vascular tissues like xylem and phloem. And bryophytes are non-vascular plants. They lack these tissues. So the leaf-like, stem-like or root-like structures that we see, they're not exactly the real deal. They're not like the true roots, leaves and stems that we see in the higher plants. You'll find many mosses and liverworts have a leafy appearance, kind of like this. And they stay anchored to the soil with the help of these root-like structures called rhizoids, which also absorb raw ingredients such as water and minerals from the soil. But here's the thing. Bryophytes are non-vascular plants. We've mentioned this a couple of times now, right? That means they have no xylem or phloem to transport food and water. Then how are these plants conducting all that they are absorbing from the soil? Well, through osmosis and diffusion. Because of their small size, bryophytes don't need a separate set of tissues to transport all the raw ingredients that they're absorbing from the soil. They can simply do so with the processes of osmosis and diffusion. Now that was all about their structure. But have you ever wondered what life is like for a bryophyte? Bryophytes have a unique life cycle that involves both haploid and diploid phases. The main plant that we usually see is the gametophyte, the dominant haploid stage of the bryophyte life cycle. Now, usually bryophytes reproduce sexually. The gametophyte we have here, it contains the reproductive organs, which produce the haploid male and female gametes. The male gametophyte has the male sex organ, which is called the antheridium. So this right here, this picture that you see, this is the antheridium, the male sex organ, which produces flagellated male gametes called antherozoids. Antherozoids. On the other hand, the female gametophyte that we have over here, this will have the female or this has the female sex organ, which is called the archegonium. So this right here, this is the female sex organ, which produces the female gamete, which is a single egg cell. Both the male and female gametes are surrounded by a bunch of sterile cells to keep them protected. That's why both the sex organs in bryophytes are multicellular in nature. Now, once these gametes are produced, the male gametes are going to be released into the water and they will swim to, the, to this egg cell or to the female gamete which is present inside the archegonium. Remember how we uh, mentioned in the beginning that water is a very important part of the bryophyte habitat? This is why. Because without the water, these male gametes won't be able to swim with the help of their flagella, by the way. Remember how we said they are flagellated? This is why. They need to, they use the, their flagella to swim and they need the water to swim. So they swim to the female gametes which are present inside the female sex organ called the archegonium. And when these gametes meet, they will undergo fertilization as it usually happens. And that will lead to the formation of a diploid zygote. 
which is right here and this diploid zygote will then develop into the sporophyte. The sporophyte is the short-lived diploid phase of the bryophyte cycle which is heavily dependent on the gametophyte for pretty much everything food, shelter, water, all of it. It is a multicellular structure which consists of a stalk called the seta. So this here, this is the seta. And on the, at the top, you will find a spore producing structure called the capsule. Now haploid spores are produced within this capsule. And when the sporophyte reaches its maturity, this capsule will rupture and the spores will be released into the environment kind of like this. So these red dots, these are the spores. And over here, the capsule has rupture, ruptured. So the spores are now released into the environment. These spores can be easily dispersed uh, with the help of wind, water or animals. And when these spores land in a suitable environment or a, or a suitable habitat, they germinate into a new gametophyte kind of like this and the cycle ends up continuing and the entire cycle continues all over again. Now, if a bryophyte wants, it can reproduce asexually too. And one of the simplest and most efficient ways to do so is through a process called fragmentation. In this process, what really happens is that a portion of the parent plant or the gametophyte, it breaks off kind of like this and it grows into a new plant and you'll see this happening quite often in mosses so this is actually a moss and you can see that fragments have broken off from the main plant or the parent plant uh, this is the gametophyte by the way and all of these fragments they will grow into a new plant these bryophytes are a fascinating group of plants aren't they and they're incredibly important to our environments too Bryophytes are highly resilient and can initiate soil formation on barren lands. They maintain soil moisture and recycle nutrients back into the environment. They also reduce pollution and provide food and habitat for various organisms. So the next time you see a patch of moss, take a moment to appreciate the complexity of these tiny plants.